much. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and what an exciting time to be here in Scotland with the, uh, with the big referendum coming up. Liverpool actually left the United Kingdom in about the early 1980s. <laughs> they never let us back in. So uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, now I'm going to talk about my research into generations. I'm going to talk about um, what it actually means. I'm going to look at who these generations are. So you're going to discover uh, information about your own generation today. So I hope you found that okay. I've got a team of councillors waiting outside for me. Um, this is my son with his friend at Costa Coffee. Um, and he sent me this, and just to show they're all having a good time. I said, Tom, I don't know, I don't want to be funny, but I, um, you're all on the phone. Who are you texting? He said, well, each other. <laughs> of course, and, you know, what's your problem? Now, let me tell you a brief history of the word whatever. Um, it first appears in English in the 14th century. It means several things. Every, anything, everything, or a sign of complexity. I said, whatever do you mean by that? That was the meaning until about the 1960s. West Coast California hippies discovered the word whatever. It's like using it as a sort of passive resistance. Whatever man, whatever dude, in my Welsh accent. All that kind of thing. We think that was the meaning of the word <coughs> until the late 1990s, when teenagers discovered the word whatever. Overnight, it becomes a weapon of mass derision. <laughs> I showed you that the word whatever has, has evolved, and it evolves particularly when it comes in by a spin of the eyes. You know the idea? I first came across the new meaning of the word whatever when I was with my wife. We were queuing up to go into the Sistine Chapel in Rome. I don't know if you've been, but this poor man was struck by a dad moment, and he said, um, stop. So the whole queue stopped, of course. And he sent his daughter, we're about to enter the Sistine Western civilization. And he went on and on. What did she say? <laughs> to see a grown man cry. <laughs> About this is a terrible thing. Now, the reason why I'm showing this is because your organizations are using the same words that you assume everyone understands. Um, Generation X, do we have any Generation X here this afternoon? Oh dear. <laughs> Angry, cynical, reactive, cross, <laughs> haunted, haunted with disillusionment. This is, this is a generation that was sold the myth in the 1980s of, of the leisure society. Do you remember that? And the idea was, by now we'd all be on holiday, we'd just be chilling out, because computers would be doing everything, and we'd all just be owning stuff. The big problem would be boredom. We really thought this in the 80s. Of course, it's not quite worked out like that, as in Generation X. Um, generation Y, they're, they, they're optimistic, again, idealistic. Um, for them, they're digital natives, so they've grown up with this information technology all the time. Um, They've got more academic qualifications than any other preceding generation. Do we have any generation wise with us? Well, it's good of you to pop in. <laughs> <laughs> this lovely <early> morning. <laughs> so, generation one. Yeah, whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've created a monster. Generation Y. Um, independent, idealistic. The children of the boomers, of course. Um, some of them probably got their parents with them now. So the parents are always with them. And as I, as I explained a bit later, I defined a term for it. I, 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 I call them helicopter parents because they seem to hover over these 20 somethings like personal SWAT teams. Boomers saved Marks and Spencers. I've always shot to Marks and Spencers. I'm going to carry on shocking my Marks and Spencers, no matter how bad it becomes. They're digital immigrants. If you started work before computers were readily available and had to teach yourself the language of computers, we refer to you as a digital immigrant. And you probably, just like an immigrant, you retain a digital accent. So you probably say things like, um, mobile phone. Is that your mobile phone? Is that your mobile phone ringing? Yeah? Just dial the number. What are you talking about, for God's sake? Um, for our generation of students, phones have always been mobile. They have been plugged into anything. And what are you talking about? Dialing a number. Um, so, so, you know, get over the mobility bit. Uh, five, final point, all your tone of voice, your generational tone of voice. Every generation has its own tone of voice. Every organisation has its tone of voice. When you go back to the office, look at your publications, see what tone of voice they have. The key thing is, it has to be appropriate to the audience that you're aiming to meet, the audience that you're aiming to target. So it has to be appropriate. And that's it. <laughs>